Greetings and salutations, everyone. We are the insiders, and man, are we excited to be here today. This has been a long time coming for us, and uh, it has been highly anticipated by uh, both Jeff and myself, and I know the excitement was shared by you guys as well, so we are just absolutely thrilled uh, to be here today and finally, finally, be able to deliver our podcast. So first things first, uh, just want to give a little, uh, a little thing about ourselves and, and where we came from as far as wrestling is concerned. So I started watching wrestling when I was a young man, uh, probably about seven or eight years old. Um, I go back to the um, time of Saturday morning wrestling which was studio wrestling pretty much. Um, they just showed it uh, very much, very similar to NWA. And that is why I like NWA so much. Um, and uh, I have been watching faithfully ever since. Uh, first live event I ever attended was in the Philadelphia Spectrum. Um, and I was able to see guys like Bob Backlund, uh, the Wild Samoans, the Mass Superstar. Um, uh, the highlight of my youth um, in wrestling was meeting Andre the Giant, which was actually very cool. It was outside of a small event that I attended in a local gym. And uh, he actually asked me when I started watching wrestling and kind of gave me a little pat on the head. So that was my highlight of my, uh, of my wrestling so far, as far as anybody I ever had the pleasure of meeting. So that is my wrestling background. I've loved it for a long time and I've watched it for a long time. And Jeff, how about yourself, buddy? Oh, man. Um, I've been a wrestling fan for as long as I can remember. Um, I, ha I actually have pictures where I'm like two or three years old and I have a uh, Hulk Hogan little stuffed animal or whatever it was. And it, I mean, it, I've been a fan for as long as I can remember. The first event that I went to, um, and I, I spoke about this on a stream a while back, uh, was Rick, I saw Ricky Steamboat and, versus uh, Ric Flair at the Greensboro Coliseum. Um, and, what I mean, what a way to be spoiled, I guess, for my first live match. Uh, I've seen a lot of live matches since then, but, you know, that one kind of holds a special place in my heart. I actually love wrestling so much that I became – a uh, wrestler and when I was in college and wrestled on the independence uh, for a little bit. And, um, you know, we'll go into that story in future episodes, but, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to be, to be doing this. You know, I have, both of us have a huge passion for wrestling and um, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that we get to share it with, with right, everyone buried. out there. Yeah. Okay. So biggest, biggest tip that I can give you. Yep. is make sure that you grow your social media, right? What you want to do is you want to actually spend a good couple of months. You want to still put up videos, okay? So you still keep working and everything and getting your videos up. Make sure you watch those videos back. And when you're watching them back, it can be difficult to do that. But watching yourself back isn't, isn't easy and certainly not at the start as well. But you've got to know that you are going to, relax into it i mean uh, as you said if you go back and watch my early videos i'm i'm nothing like i am now so um you will you will improve you will get more comfortable right so watch the videos back make the changes you need to make but you've got to grow a, a, a some kind of a following you've got to get some sort of uh you know connections going um otherwise you will just put up videos and they just won't go anywhere because um you'll put them onto yeah. youtube and YouTube is just going to go, okay, well, what, I don't know what to do. With, no one's asked for this video, so it can, it can go there, and it will just get pushed to one side. Um, what you need is you need to have people that once the video goes up, you're going to get a, you know, a nice amount of people that are going to want to see it and want to see what you've got to say. And the only way that you can get, make that yeah. connection is on social media. So when I started – I where spent. Did you, um, the first did you few always months. have the character that you have now? So the Zicky Dice. Oh, hell okay. no. Hell no. <laughs> like, hell no. I wish that, like, we could bring up a picture. Like, I'll post it. It's, it's somewhere along. But at first, I came out like, I wanted to be like, so I always had the name Zicky Dice, right? Uh, a stoner buddy of mine back in 2007. My name is Nick Zappo. Started calling me Zip because he's an idiot. So he switched the letters, but it stuck. So everyone called, started uh, calling me Zick, and on the road with bands, that just evolved into Zicky because people just had one add-on, whatever. I always had some dice in my pocket because we were always shooting dice, so boom, there it was, Zicky Dice. And 
um, at first I saw like this casino pit boss like type. So like I wore these like white suit pants and like I had this big old beard and brown hair and then like uh, like a singlet on under and I ended up looking like a bootleg Bray Wyatt and I was like, nah. So then I went from there to, um, you know, I wore a singlet once and then I wore uh, long tights and it had like my name airbrush on the back and then I went to trunks and then like, you know, I shaved off the beard and then, and then I started like having this vision, right? And then I pierced the ear and I started growing a mullet out and I started rocking my, my natural curly hair. These are natural, by the way. Um, <laughs> and, um, and then I was at the gym with a buddy of mine, 530 in the morning, we we're clowning on some dude which you shouldn't really do in retrospect, but Hey, it's five in the morning. I gotta do something that has to fun. And I said the word outlandish and it came out just like that. And it just immediately a light bulb, just ding. my brain. I try and explain this. My brain, I don't know if you've ever been to Disneyland or, uh, but there's the ride space mountain where you go yep. on the roller coasters. There's like sh stars shooting at your face extreme. That is my yep. brain at all times. Okay, with this ideas, is some, uh, like predominantly ma male dominated industry. The same with MMA. People are going to treat you like shit because one, they want to test you how tough you are. And that still happens. And I know they say it's bully or whatever, but that's going to build, that's what's going to build toughness, you know, sometimes. Because like this business is not easy. And if you want to succeed, you have to be tough, mentally tough, physically tough, spiritually tough too. Because you're going to be, have, have to do a lot of sacrifices. You're going to like fail in your face so many times and you have to keep going. Because if, if you get sad when people tell you no and you get all moppy, you're not going to make it in this business. You know, you have to work as hard as you can to go for what you want. You know, the big companies, they already know what they want and who they want. And sometimes it's not you. So you got to work your ass off to make a name. We for have yourself. a Moda alert. We've got Moda in the house. Uh, Moda, Moda says, hey, Brandy, you are truly an inspiration. I have a special needs daughter. And you are proof and give hope that you can do anything if you want, you want, if you put your mind to it. Blessings to you. Thank you so much. Uh, he has Kelly's in the chat and he, he's a lifelong friend of mine. And he can tell you, like, I don't take no for an answer. I don't, I don't believe in the word can't. Um, dedication, determination, and devotion have kind of been my three days of life. And so you know, you just, you just take what life gives you and you do the best you can with it. And that's, that's all you can do. What are your goals going into 2021? I recently told Ethan Page on an episode of Impact that we cannot be a tag team at this time. Mm. So the North has been put on the shelf and it will come back eventually. It'll always be there. I will never tag with anybody else. I will never want another tag team partner on this planet. So if you see me tagging up with somebody else, just know I got paid a lot of money or I <laughs> owe somebody a favor. <laughs> but yeah, for the meantime, I will be pursuing a singles run in Impact Wrestling. Uh, you know, and the only reason I got into wrestling was to be a champion. And I've been a champion at every single company I've been a part of. So I don't think this is going to be any different. Anything I can get my hands on. If I had an after mag or any type of pro wrestling illustrator or something of that nature. And I saw, well, who's this guy? And I keep hearing about reading about this guy or anything like that. I want to know where they wrestled. I'll never forget ECW seeing Sabu for the first time and like, oh, oh, I need more of this. Or reading reading about like ECW versus WCW. And it was like Arn Anderson versus Sabu before it became, you know, the extreme. It was still, I think it was still Eastern Championship Wrestling. But I remember, oh, Shane Douglas is over there. What's he doing? I remember Shane Douglas. Oh, there's Jimmy Snuka. And wanting to know what was that. And next thing you know, it turned into, who's this Tasmanian guy? Oh, wait, that was the guy that used to look like a, a savage, but now he's clean cut and – has a buzz cut and uh, what's going on here. I would always want to know that history. I just want to know about wrestling. So I'll never understand that mindset of like not wanting to watch wrestling. Like, yeah, yep. I don't know if the fans just don't understand how hard it was before, but man, like having new Japan at my fingertips, having old school WCW, WWE, WWF, NWA, AWA, having all that stuff, world-class at my fingertips. Yeah. Sign me up, man. I want to watch it. Having impact, old school impact, TNA at my fingertips, like, come on, man. It's sky's the limit. Having a new promotion that's on TNT and it's wrestling, like, why would you not want to watch that? There's so much, there's history being made and people aren't even being a part of it. And it blows my mind. I don't understand that at all. 
I love that comment. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I love that comment, man. Yeah, are, are like, are you a wrestling fan or are you just a, you know what I mean? Like, and and I don't even know. Like, it, I struggle with that too because it's almost like when you see that kind of stuff going back and forth on social media, you start to wonder to yourself: Are you just are you just hating things because you just want to hate stuff? I and totally I, like, believe that. I, if oh. I didn't, if it wasn't for wrestling, I wouldn't even have Twitter or any of that because oh. the toxicity that I see yeah. just in society nowadays, whether it's politics, entertainment, whatever, yeah. uh, but even wrestling fans, I say this, there's so many elitist uh, wrestling wrestling fans. Like mm -hmm. I, I would always meet them at indie shows and watch them at indie shows like, oh, I, well, this person comes from here and they don't wrestle this style of wrestling, so I'm not going to cheer for them or buy that. It's like, shut up. Like it's yeah. wrestling. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like one giant stew. You like the celery? You like the beef? You like the carrots? What do you like? You like the broth? You like it hot? You like it cold? What is it? No, no matter Whatever it is, there's something that you like, and you don't need to crap on the other thing. It's like people are just so – their noses are up in the air. And it, to be honest, like the way a good chunk of wrestling fans are nowadays absolutely annoys the hell out of me. So being the fact that I get to be a heel – and just talk trash to them on the internet makes me feel so great because I'm not being serious. You know what I mean? A lot of these fans and part of my language can eat shit. So it's great because they, they have such a high, um, like, uh, expectations of themselves. It's like you, you're, you're watching. You're paying to watch us. You know you know what I'm saying? We're getting paid to be here. You're paying to be there. Just just stop and enjoy it. Just stop having yep. such this high attitude about Oh, this professional wrestler, yeah, 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 yeah. he doesn't do this and this person. He's like, shut up. Nobody cares. Just watch it. <laughs> I don't mean, I enjoy it. Shut up and enjoy it. Oh, no. Oh, God, freaking Johnny Bravo. Ah. <laughs> no. The stream just went down to a seven. Johnny Bravo gets me all upset. You seven. picked up on um, personally and, and you know, while we were going back through. Um, I think the only thing that I noticed that stood out is the hand that she used um, to spread the ashes were her play glove. Okay. Not her pain glove. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously she's used that song before when she was on the swing. She was singing Ring Around the Rosie. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. And now she's got ashes inside this pentagram and she's, I, I mean, I think she was calling him up from wherever he was. <laughs> and how yeah. many times, Jeff, have I told you, I'm kind of starting to think that Bray might be Lucifer. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you might have called that like a month or so ago, not if not longer. So, um, yeah, and you know, Jody Strike. So, um, <laughs> you know, we we need to appreciate that because, yeah, you you said it. Um, yeah, or at least some higher level demon that knows the Bible. I mean just because of all the references and parallels that have been there. And yeah, I mean, I just think I've been thinking that for a while that maybe he's trying to portray actual Lucifer, but I know there are other demons that can change form like that different personalities that he has. But I mean, if you start to read up about, Lucifer and who he was and how he was. There's there's a lot of similarities there. So Ray might have to get Rob Zombie to sing some music for his entrance. Um, <laughs> <That'd be awesome. laughs> Rob Rob kind of gets into this kind of stuff, so uh, he he may have to sing him in. Um, oh, now man. we have the elimination chamber, right? We have the elimination chamber. We more likely either get teased or we get an appearance. Either way, it's a good thing, right? Because we're getting close to WrestleMania. Uh, we got about, what, uh, 54, 55 days? Yeah. Uh, but if this is a tease, cool. If they decide they want to, like, hey, let's, uh, add, let's add a little craziness to Fastlane, which is the first pay-per-view for the Peacock Network, then, then, yeah, let's do that, too. So we can either... Do this at Fast Lane, and actually, yesterday got me wondering about Karen Cross now. 
<laughs> because now since this, since we got that other stuff going on around, now do we do a mixed tag for WrestleMania? <laughs> because now it's like I would pass out. <laughs> I would legit get, pass out. Can we get Carrie Cross and Scarlett versus Alexa Bliss and the feed at WrestleMania? Why not? Put that in the universe. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm adding in there. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, it's already. It's more like the already going to have. It's gonna like it's gonna be have all the brands together for WrestleMania anyway. So might as well just do some crazy stuff. Which means NXT fans, you might get the fiend on NXT. <laughs> also, just throw it out there. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. If they, to, uh, get it, if they want to build up that mixed tag team match, he's going to have mm-hmm. to appear on NXT. Yeah. What? The actual... Um, I, I think Joe is having a meltdown. He's he's going crazy. He Joe Joe, you okay, man? You you okay? What the hell happened? That was the big scene that we were, we planned this for a week. What the hell happened? We planned this thing since last week, and look what the hell happened. Oh my god, this is pathetic. Who the who is responsible for this? Who the hell is responsible for this? This is the worst thing I have ever seen in my entire. What an embarrassment! Who the hell? Yeah, I know who it is. I know who's responsible for this, Jeff. I know who this is. I know who's responsible. I know who it is. I know who. You know who it is. It's my. It's my milkman. My milkman that I haven't seen since I was four effing years old. He hasn't brought any milk to me since I was four years old. He's been gone since then. I've never seen him come. My damn milkman is doing this. That's who did it. My milkman effed up our entrance. My milkman effed up our entrance, Jeff. What in the hell is going on here? How the hell did he get in here and mess up my entrance after I'm 50, 47 years, 47 years, my freaking milkman came and messed up our entrance. Jeff, I, I can't even, oh my God, I am so mad. How you know, could this happen? We built this up all week long. My freaking milkman ruined it. You know, My milkman ruined it. Oh my God. I, 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 bl- I blame it on Wiley Coyote. I mean, it, you know, he... He was supposed to give me the hookup with Acme, and you know, apparently we got that crap. So, I mean, my God, that's oh wow! I mean, all these guys in the chat. Look at this, Jeff. We have forty-one people in the chat. Forty-one. Everybody 41. came came in early, and all know. these people took the time out of their day. To come in here making sure they listened to me and they came in expecting this big, humongous thing. And what the hell? Look what happened. Look what the hell happened. I mean, my damn milkman ruined the whole freaking show. I mean, talk about a letdown. Oh, my. Oh, my God. How can anyone do that to anyone? How can anybody do that to anyone? Oh, my. Like how, oh my God, this is horrible! How this can, is the most embarrassing thing I've ever been a part of. This is horrible. How can one hype up something so much, and then have it fizzle out the way that that just did? I mean, it. Dang it! Oh my God! Oh my God! I don't believe it. I I I just I can't believe it. I can't believe it. All you guys that the, see, well, what's going to happen now, Jeff? We're going to lose the, the whole audience. They're going to leave. They're yeah. going to leave, and I, you know, and and I, I can't blame them. I can't blame them. They're going to just walk out. You know, all they're they just walk out. All they're going to talk about is the the really crappy opening that we had. That's, oh. that's yeah, it. yeah. When when they talk about what was the insider's biggest ever opening, that that that, that what they're going to remember? They're going to remember this. They're going to remember this. Yeah. This is what they're going to remember. 
Now in saddles, I know it's your um, one year anniversary of you doing podcasts on YouTube, and I just have to say I really love your podcasts, and yeah, I love um, watching your guys' watch. WWE net watch longs. I watch them sometimes. And I love hanging out with you guys on Tuesdays for Impact. So this was just a little video and hey DJ B Tazzy and Jody. And Yeah, I hope there is more things that's coming you guys this year. They, um, your guys' way to, uh, like, the coming years. And, yeah. See you guys. Love you, Insiders. Hey, Insiders. Just want to say congratulations for the first year. Love you guys. Uh, I sent one video, but I'm going to send this one. And I just want to say that I found you guys around the holidays, which was a really difficult time, given it was the first one since my wife's passing. But your friendship and your acceptance of me, for me, got me through it. And I am so grateful. And here's to another bazillion years of the insiders. So... I can't say enough about how much you guys have brought to my life, how much joy, and you're all just too sweet.